Hi, I'm Phil Lowe, and I want to thank uh, Wood and Shop for uh, visiting the school this morning. Uh, my name is Phil Lowe, and I'm the director of the school and the furniture maker in charge. And uh, we're nestled right here on Beverly Harbor, a uh, hundred yards from the uh, the shop. It's quite a nice setting, uh, you know, if you'd like to spend a little time in the summer. Uh, the school is uh, designed to give summer programs from uh, one day to two weeks long. Uh, we run some night classes as well as a full-time program which can be one, two or three years. So why don't we go on up to the shop and I'll show you around. Uh, this is the design room at the Furniture Institute. This is where we do all our layouts for the different pieces of furniture that we uh, build in the shop. And all the uh, pieces are really designed here uh, with all the joinery and the ornamentation and uh, so on. And if you look at the board here, this is what we lay everything out full size by hand. Uh, so this is a, a design of a Chippendale uh, uh, upholstered chair. We've got a front view a side view and a plan view and uh, you know some of the carving is over on the front leg over there and we produce a stock list uh, that we use in the shop to, uh, to produce all the parts. Uh, some of the uh, pieces that you see around the, uh, the shop here are examples of work that the students have done and some examples of some of the workshops that we run as well. Uh, one of my full-time students, uh, Freddie Roman, uh, made this beautiful Seymour um, dressing table uh, which is made out of mahogany and bird's eye maple and he made up all these bandings as well and uh, you know he's got these beautiful scrolls on it and uh, of course the uh, the drawers are all all dovetailed together by hand um, you know just as it would have been in the 18th century. Uh, this chair here happens to be an example of one of the chairs that we did in one of the summer workshops one year. This is crotch birch in the back and uh, you know it's based on a federal chair uh, by uh, Langley Boardman out of uh, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Uh, we have a few other things around here. This is, happens to be a chair that I got uh, to do as a job. This is uh, what they call a Samuel McIntyre um, federal chair that's uh, based on uh, one from the, uh, the Sheridan book. And uh, Samuel McIntyre was a 18th century furniture carver and I got to build six of these for the Pierce Nichols house that uh, belongs to the Peabody Essex Museum. So, uh, a few other the pieces here. This happens to be a small little uh, uh, table that we did in one of the uh, summer classes this year. A uh, nice shaker table. It's all the basic joinery. Uh, this is a great uh, table to start your uh, woodworking after you may have done a hand tool class or a machine woodworking class. Okay, all the samples that you see on the wall here are actually part of our library. This happens to be a nice little storyboard of a, a McIntyre rosette that I got to carve for the PBX Essex Museum over in Salem as one of the conservation jobs that I, I have done for them. Uh, we have other samples of things that uh, you know people may take classes in. This happens to be a Newport shell. That's a one week class that we run uh, during the summer. Uh, we do ball and claw feet as well. Uh, sometimes we'll do a week long class in carbon knees. Uh, we also have night classes where we do uh, 12 week nights of uh, wood carving. Uh, and uh, some of the other samples over here are you know, different types of uh, knee carving that uh, you might do um, on a leg. Uh, we have different you know, Sheridan style legs, uh, different inlaid uh, legs with bell flowers and stringing, uh, different types of column bases and you know so on and so forth. It's just stimulus for the students to be able to uh, choose and sort of uh, get some ideas from. <clears throat> the piece uh, over here 
is actually a uh, nice little walnut low boy that I'm working on with uh, the video crew with Fine Woodworking and they're going to um, do a DVD on this uh, after it uh, runs on their website for several episodes. Uh, several episodes. Um, it's pretty well made. It's got uh, nice you know, pine interior with uh, dovetails and a nicely carved fan in the center with cabriole legs. Nice dovetails in the petitions and uh, really a, quite a spectacular uh, walnut top that uh, um, is one solid board. So why don't we go ahead into the, uh, into the bench room and I'll show you what's going on there. We're in the midst of a two week summer workshop right now uh, in, the, in the bench room. This is where all the handwork actually takes place. Uh, one of the, the fellows from uh, New Jersey, Jim Galvin, has uh, uh, designed and is working on this nice pair of Sheridan uh, armchairs. Um, he's got nice beaded uh, you know, back posts, intermediate rail, and you can see the mortises for the, uh, the splats that are going to go up into the crest rail. These are made out of uh, mahogany and uh, you know he's done a, a drawing for that as well that you can see over here. Uh, this was produced um, you know in the shop here on uh, Monday and Tuesday before he started uh, construction and uh, this happens to be a uh, you know a very advanced class so uh, usually people that has taken several classes will um, you know jump in on a class like this. Uh, some of the other things that are going on in the shop are uh, you know, I have this chair here, which is uh, a Chippendale uh, chair. I'm in the process of, process of making 12 of these for a, uh, the, the Thomas Jefferson Memorial Front, which is, uh, uh, which is up in Manchester by the sea. They're made out of air-dried uh, walnut, and you can see that I got everything pretty well built. I'm just in the process of uh, trying to fit the stretchers now. Um, Jim is working on some, uh, you know, some legs for a Seymour uh, dressing table as well. Uh, he's got all the pieces prepared out there, and I'll show you a, a round mirror that he just recently turned on the lathe. Okay, I have a, you know, a small collection of uh, different types of uh, planes and, uh, you know, some uh, s sort of a history of hand planes. You know, we go from, you know, pretty basic, uh, you know, uh, uh, smoothing planes uh, that were all made by hand uh, right up through uh, you know the Stanley style planes and the Leo ne Lee Nielsen style planes so um, you know a little bit of everything uh, a couple of my favorite planes are you know especially contemporary ones is definitely the shoot plane that's made by um, Lee Nielsen it's beautiful for you know trimming uh, ends of boards and so forth to get them perfectly square and then also uh, you know this number nine which is you know a you know highly uh, regarded plane that's based on one of the old Stanley models um, my bench here is uh, you know this is one that I just recently did for fine woodworking we did a, a video workshop on how to build this bench so uh, you can buy the DVD on that as well but I you know I have it all fitted out with my you know my uh, layout tools underneath there are my chisels and then in the drawer below are all the uh, all the hand planes that I use on a daily basis okay this is David Habino David spent the, uh, the, uh, the summer with me last year taking a bunch of preliminary classes and he's decided to take the advanced studio furniture class with me this year and he's working on a, wench, uh, a workbench out of uh, maple and uh, purple heart and uh, David can have couple things to say. Um, yeah, uh, kind of inspiration for his bench was partly Phil's and from reading Scott Lance's workbench book. Um, when I first started taking this open studio, I, I emailed Phil about trying to get this workbench completed. Um, I know some of my friends have tried making one, ended up buying one from Lee Nielsen. I know another guy tried making one, said it took a month, so I was kind of hesitant from trying to make one two weeks. But Phil says no problem and it's coming right along. I have my top of it glued up. I'm just finishing on the base. My top is downstairs, I'll show you that. But uh, this is just working on the base right now, and I think that get the Morrison tans all fit up, get the panels in, I should be able to dry fit everything today. So in two weeks, I'll be able to get a whole workbench done. <laughs> So this is David's workbench. 
is the top I have. Um, it's all uh, hard maple where the ends are going to be purple heart. Um, I have the dog pole set up in a similar fashion to Phil's. Um, I have one, these two lines right in line with the vise, and then the next on the other side, and I have them soft just like Phil's again, kind of so I can put um, two dogs in, put a piece of wood in there, use it as a stop. And we're using it that way, I kind of don't need a tail vise, I can just kind of clamp the board into there and use pressure against it, and it works out just fine. All right, uh, a few other things that we have around the shop here is um, uh, these are the 12 uh, chairs that I was telling you about up in the other room. I have over here some samples of uh, um, a Salem furniture maker uh, named Nathaniel Gould. And uh, what I've done is I've actually produced these by, uh, by hand with bow saws and uh, carving tools and so forth. Uh, so that they can use it in an upcoming exhibition in November uh, on Nathaniel Gould, which will be at the Peabody Essex Museum. Uh, you know, we have uh, Nathaniel Gould uh, carved a particular style of ball and claw foot uh, with these nice long talons and the swept back uh, claw, and also uh, this nice, you know, fan with these spandrels uh, down below, below, or the rosettes down below. Um, so you should look forward to that one. It's going to be a great exhibition. Um, the shop here is equipped with uh, all kinds of different uh, industrial equipment. We have a, you know, a 14, 16 inch uh, Oliver table saw. We got a 10 foot lathe over here. Uh, we can actually turn long bed posts on uh, a, a lathe like this. And. Uh, you know, we have two band saws in the shop. You know, we've got a 30 inch Fay and Egan and a 20 inch, uh, you know, Rockwell that we do a lot of resawing on. We also have a 16 inch jointer, an 18 inch planer. All of these are Oliver as well. And uh, we also have our, our marquetry donkey here, which is a, uh, you know, a, a, you know, a piece that I made uh, several years ago to show the students the history of marquetry. And marquetry is uh, basically pictures in wood. And the way this works is uh, you actually sit down, you know, on the, uh, on the donkey itself and you hold this with your feet and then you actually make your cuts by hand. That's basically how this works, but there's a whole procedure to, you know, doing a rose like that. But it's, uh, you know, it's a great history lesson for the for the students. All right, we got a shaper here as well that we do a lot of, uh, tr you know, flush cutting on, and uh, we got a couple more lays over there. And um, Jim uh, is working on this, uh, you know, this mirror frame that uh, he. Uh, is making a Seymour uh, dressing stand for and he's about ready to just do a little bit of sanding on that so we get that thing you know going here and he'll show you uh, so this was all turned with this spinning at about 600 rpms and then uh, you know he's just in the finishing stages now where he's going to do a little bit of uh, sanding on it this is Jim Podesvas from uh, New York Jim's been taking classes with me for a number of years here So once he's finished with this sanding, we'll uh, take this off and it's screwed to the face plate and uh, it'll be ready to wrap it for the glass and the uh, backboard and then it'll eventually get gilded. So, uh, back here we have, uh, you know, places for uh, wood storage. All the, uh, the students get one uh, bay when they come in for the full-time program for, in order for them to keep... Uh, uh, you know, their materials in order and so forth. We have a large dust collection system over here, uh, which works very well on all the machines. And then we have a little tool room uh, in here where all the uh, uh, turning tools and wrenches and uh, so forth are, are kept. 
uh, for uh, maintenance and uh, helps to prevent them from getting lost as well. Well, uh, I'd like to thank you for taking a, a little time to uh, view the workshop here. Um, it's certainly nice to be able to show it off and show off the work that the students do here. And uh, I hope you come and visit uh, to take a weekend workshop. Or if you're interested in uh, some full-time instruction, this is the place to be. Thanks. If you're interested in learning traditional woodworking with hand tools, visit my website at woodandshop.com where you can find free video tutorials, buying guides, and reviews. Make sure you subscribe to my regular blog posts and also check out my 10 steps for getting started. Enjoy!